Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm going to blow your mind by showing you exactly what an ear candle is doing from the perspective of being inside your ear canal. Coming up. A few years ago, I published a viral video showing you how much earwax was removed from a human ear canal using an ear candle. To those of you not familiar with ear candling, the theory is that when you put an ear candle inside of your ear and you light the end of it, it will create a gentle suction effect that will literally pull earwax out of your ear. Given the extreme popularity of that first video, I wanted to go ahead and revisit this topic and conduct an entirely new experiment with the help of my buddy Carl from Ahead Simulations. You see, the thing about Carl is that he has transparent ear canals that are anatomically correct. This means that if we had a camera inside of his head, which we do, we'll be able to see what an ear candle is actually doing as we treat his ear like a birthday cake. Now I know some of you are thinking, Cliff, he is not even a real human being. He does not produce earwax. Well, fortunately, I'm an audiologist, and the one thing that I have plenty of is earwax that I've removed from my patient's ears. Now, before you go and say, oh, that's just gross, just remember, this is in the name of science. All right, before we get started, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel, and it helps get these videos in front of a broader audience. On top of that, if you have not yet hit the subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that right now as well, because that will notify you every single time I release a new video. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now I should say that ear candling can be extremely dangerous. It is generally never a good idea to light a fire near your head, especially if you use as much hair product as I do. There have been numerous cases and reports of individuals lighting their hair on fire as well as dripping hot wax inside of their ear canal causing permanent damage. So just to make sure that I don't get sued, I'm telling you right now you should not try this at home. One of the biggest problems that I have with ear candling is that nobody ever shows you what's happening inside of the ear canal. All they do is they burn the candle down, unravel the rest of it, and show you all the wax that's inside of the bottom of the candle, and then they make the assumption that this wax was actually suctioned out of your ear canal. But that's where Carl comes into play. Because if I can show you from inside of Carl's ear canal what's actually happening with earwax, then it will settle the debate once and for all. Like I mentioned before, I have a lot of earwax that I've removed from my patient's ears over the past several days, and I'm going to use this earwax to put inside of Carl's ear canal to show you what's actually happening to this earwax when we light an ear candle. The entire experiment took approximately 50 minutes, but to make this video a reasonable length, I sped up the video to play in just a few minutes. I will also link the full length 50 minute experiment video in the description below if you're interested in watching it. I broke up the video into four different sections on the screen. The bottom left section is a full video of the experiment from beginning to end. The top right is the camera inside of Carl's head, so we can actually see what's going on inside of his ear canal. The bottom right is an overhead view of the scale that I was using where I'm weighing Carl's ear before and after each candle. The top left is a video of me unraveling what is left inside of each candle after we've burnt it down to 4 inches remaining as recommended on the manufacturer's box. The top left and bottom right will remain black until I activate each camera as I'm actually unraveling a candle or weighing Carl's ear canal. Feel free to pause the video at any point to see the video evidence for yourself, or feel free to watch the full length 50 minute video of the experiment that I have linked in the description. For the experiment itself, I used one control candle and three experimental candles. Before I started, I weighed Carl's ear on a calibrated jewelry scale that can measure down to 1 1,000th of a gram, which came out to 44.774 grams. Then I burned the control candle in Carl's empty ear canal. After burning the candle, I examined the remaining contents of the candle, which did reveal a waxy substance that was clearly not from Carl's ear. I also weighed Carl's ear after the control candle and it showed 44.78 grams, which is nearly identical to what it was before burning the control candle. After burning the control candle, we inserted 0.86 grams of human earwax into Carl's ear canal. And then we re-weighed his ear with the earwax inside, which came out to 45.595 grams. 
If ear candling actually removes earwax, we would expect to see this number of 45.595 grams reduced back down closer to 44.78 grams in weight. If it does not reduce significantly in weight, it would be fair to say that the ear candles were not effective in removing earwax. And if it does come down significantly in weight, then it would be plausible that ear candling is effective in removing earwax. After burning the first experimental candle, we could see an equivalent amount of wax left inside the candle as the control candle that we burned earlier in the experiment. We then reweighed Carl's ear to see if the weight had reduced below 45.595 grams, which would indicate the removal of some earwax. However, the weight after the first experimental candle was 45.611 grams, indicating no reduction in earwax with the first candle that we tested on Carl's wax-filled ear canal. We repeated this experiment with two more candles, each one producing a waxy substance after burning, similar to the amount that we saw from the control candle. We also reweighed the ear after each candle to see if the weight of the ear was reduced, indicating a possibility that wax was being removed by the candle. Here is the complete breakdown of the weight measurements. The weight of the empty ear was 44.774 grams. The weight of the empty ear after the control candle was very similar at 44.78 grams. The weight of the earwax before inserting that earwax into the ear canal was 0.86 grams. The weight of the ear with the earwax was 45.595 grams. The weight of the ear with earwax after burning the first experimental candle was 45.611 grams. The weight of the ear with earwax after burning the second experimental candle was 45.6 grams. And the weight of the ear with earwax after burning the third experimental candle was 45.591 grams. Of course, these measurements were not that surprising considering that we could see with our own eyes throughout the entire experiment that the ear candles were not actually removing any earwax from Carl's ear canal. Here is a still frame of each candle and the remaining contents of each after burning. As you can see, there is a waxy substance inside of each candle that ear candling experts would claim to be earwax that was removed from an ear canal. Okay, let's discuss these results. First, each experimental candle that was burnt on Carl's ear canal that had wax inside of it revealed a waxy substance remaining in the bottom of that candle that was very similar to the amount of waxy substance that was left in the control candle. The weight of Carl's ear with earwax inside of it did not change throughout each of the three experimental trials, indicating that no wax was actually removed from his ear canal. So you're probably thinking, well, where did that wax come from if it didn't come from Carl's ear canal? Well, I'm gonna actually open up one of these ear candles and show you what's inside the ear candle before you even burn it. So I'm just gonna literally like cut this guy completely open here. There we go. And if I open it up, what you'll see is that there's actually nothing inside of here before you burn it. It's just an empty cylinder. But when you start to burn it, all this waxy substance that's inside of this little cotton outside layer melts down to the point where when you're done burning it, you're left with a big clump of wax in the bottom of the candle. So in conclusion, does this mean that ear candles do not actually remove earwax? Well, Yes, that is exactly what it means. Not only should you have seen a visible reduction in earwax inside of Carl's ear canal, but we should also have been able to measure a reduction in weight of Carl's ear with the remaining earwax inside of it. Since we did not see the weight of Carl's ear reduce at all through each of these three experimental trials, it indicates that no earwax was actually removed. Now I know that there are those of you out there who are going to say that the only reason I did this experiment and got a bad result is because I'm worried about losing business inside of my clinic from professional earwax removal services. And to that I'll say, I barely make any money from earwax removal anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. And if I really wanted to make a lot of money, all I would do is do a fake positive review of these ear candles to show that they actually removed earwax from an ear canal, and then I would sell these on my website and make a killing. Besides, there are literally dozens, if not hundreds, of peer-reviewed studies that have shown that ear candling is not an effective way to remove earwax from an ear canal and that they are just downright dangerous. 
When it's all said and done, it is quite apparent that ear candling is not an effective way to remove earwax from your ear canal. And if you are still not convinced, then I don't believe that there is any proof that you could be presented with that would change your mind anyway. So for those of you out there who still have issues with earwax building up inside of your ear canals, I'm going to have to give you the same boring recommendation that I've been giving my patients for years, which is you just have to go into a professional like an audiologist or an ear, nose, and throat physician and have them safely and effectively remove your earwax. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.